What's up folks, Toby here and today I'll be doing a follow-up video on in the guide uh, series for specifically one hero gameplay. So Jeebus Outcast template gameplay in Heroes 3. And this video will be about secondary skills. So which ones you want, which ones you need, which ones you kind of just like. And I think this video will serve as a pretty mandatory context before we jump into each faction separately and, you know, just go over the specifics for each faction. So I will be sort of listing in tiers those secondary skills, sort of just categorizing them. But, you know, let's just roll the intro and you'll see for yourselves. so as you can see on your screen um, I didn't <laughs> decide to go with the standard you know 1 to 10 rating or the standards A B C D tier list kind of uh, instead I, I thought to do justice to the secondary skills I need a bit of a modified tier list maybe even categorizing them would be more accurate and in total I decided to make five categories I think that more or less covers everything so jumping right into it we have the first the top category which is you will pretty much lose if you don't have these skills so they're the absolute sort of best ones but i think not not the word best but maybe mandatory i think that's a way more accurate description now the second category is your entire game will be horrible without these skills so that means you will be at a severe disadvantage throughout the entire game throughout whatever stage early game mid game late game doesn't matter you'll just be you know missing something really bad uh, last one is um well not last one the third one is a portion of your game will be horrible without these skills so whether you'll be missing something severely early game or something severely late game like something will be missing which will be prohibiting from having you you know just the perfect experience now the fourth category is kind of specific um i decided to name it slippers so you know slippers with a few unicorns or something so <laughs> well, yeah, the, the, this category is just slippers. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I'll put it this way. Like, are you consciously happy right now that you're wearing slippers? You're probably not, but at the same time, when you think about it, well, yeah, like, I'd rather be wearing slippers than not wearing slippers right now. So, it, it's kind of like that. <laughs> I, I hope it makes sense because like it's just you know it's just, it's good to have you can have a game without them but they're generally good to have and then finally we of course have garbage so you know you, you just need like a category like that one other note i wanted to mention before rating those skills is that i've included as you can see some of the skills that are not available in the template but the reason for that is twofold. So for example, logistics was previously available in the template, so it might at some point come back. And then the second reason is that there are some heroes which do start with these skills. So while you cannot level into them, you do start with them. So this might help you um, to make better informed decisions when selecting which hero you want to start with. And with all that out of the way, let's jump into the skills. So let's start with a few very easy ones, which are extremely straightforward. So we have two skills which go into the number one category, which is you will pretty much lose the game without uh, these skills. So we have Earth Magic and we have Air Magic. If you don't have these two skills, you will probably lose the game. They provide you the spellcasting that you need. So, you know, super chain lightning, summoning air elementals, um, protection from air, as well as anti-magic. These are the most important uh, combat spells you can have in this template. On top of that, they provide you with proper control. So that means moving across the map properly. If you don't have one of these skills, your opponent can pretty much kite you indefinitely. If you don't have, you know, 
earth magic you cannot teleport to whichever town you want if you do not have air magic you cannot even track your opponents unless you have the entire map scouted so plus on top of that you only have one dimension door instead of the two that your opponent will be having so you always have less movement and like it's, it's just so so bad when the movement points are the probably arguably most precious resource in the entire game in this specific template and missing these crucial skills to be able to use your movement points to the to the most it's pretty much uh, an instant you know gg from you it is possible but it is extremely highly unlikely now next up next up we have offense and armor so two very very similar skills now these are kind of a pickle because they kind of do the same thing but everyone seems to rate offense a bit higher than armor i would say though that both of them fall into the same category and they are not the thing that you know makes your entire game horrible like you know people do play deemer uh, people do play like Sealy, and they do just fine it might be suboptimal just a bit but they are just fine so i would actually put both of these and this is debatable i imagine some people would rate them higher but realistically i would say only a portion of your game will be horrible without these two skills your early game will be really really bad because you won't be able to take the fights that you'd like to you won't be able to start uh, taking off as soon as uh, your opponent maybe like you know something like Alkin is a very good example you know you start with armor and offense and like at level three you're able to take massive fights your units just don't die they, they hit like trucks uh, you're able to take big boxes and snowball but it is possible to just take off without these skills they are not mandatory throughout the entire game like in mid game in late game you will not feel the impacts of these two skills as much though in final battle you will once again feel the repercussions of not having them so i would actually rate them as a portion of your game will be horrible without these skills now the next thing and this is kind of weird and probably the most controversial one that i could name is i'm actually gonna put scouting way above here your entire game will be horrible without scouting there's also like people i think value scouting a bit differently everyone values scouting like don't get me wrong everyone values scouting they will sometimes prioritize maybe like armor maybe like offense over scouting maybe like diplomacy but scouting is just really solid throughout the entire game the main reason for that is that again if you're most valuable if if we agree on the assumption that the most valuable resource you have in this game is your movement points then everything that allows you to have more of them is going to be insanely good it's just going to be straight up bonkers immediately and scouting from day one it helps you make more educated decisions it makes you it helps you go to the you know take the direction or go to the places where you actually gain something it makes you waste far fewer movement points because well you just can't see anything you gotta go and explore so scouting is just amazing throughout the entire game early game you save a lot of points you have the potential of scouting an early box to help you take off sooner uh, mid game it helps you when progressing through the desert like finding the control that you might be missing late game it makes your farming efficiency go through the roof so it's just very solid well-rounded skill throughout the entire game it doesn't help you take fights which is kind of why again i didn't want to use like a rating from one to ten kind of scale when when you know categorizing these skills because at that point maybe like offense and armor would be kind of on this on the uh, on the same level but looking at it from this perspective like your entire game will definitely feel horrible if you don't have scout now next up we have something somewhat straightforward as well which is diplomacy um diplomacy is super strong it can straight up like solo win you the games easily 
you know, you have a solid hero, you don't have any army, you farm some utopias, you deploy a massive stack and suddenly, you know, you're, you're just um, flowing in like army or something. So it can straight up win you the games. However, diplomacy does absolutely nothing for the first like three weeks of the game. The best you can hope from diplomacy in the first three weeks of the game is, you know, deploying some meat for like Utopia so that your actual power stack doesn't get focused. If you have like a power stack of like Grand Elves or, you know, Master Genie, something very squishy which you don't want focused, like this is the best that diplomacy is going to do in the first three weeks. Not to mention the fact that you have like expert diplomacy in the first three weeks means that you don't have some other skill in expert level. So for example, expert earth to cast um, expert shield, which probably would save you more army than that meat you diplode, or like expert armor, which also probably would save you more army than the diplo, or like expert offense or scouting to save you movement points and so on. So diplomacy is extremely strong late game. It is often the win condition for late game. Like if you don't have diplomacy late game, you just want to try to take the fight as soon as possible. However, in the first three weeks, it doesn't do anything for you. It's a, it's a completely dead skill. Like fucking necromancy is better. <laughs> so next up we have logistics. So again, not a single hero is currently starting with it. Um, in previous version of Jeebus Outcast, logistics was available and it is like I would say it's in the middle between these two. Either your entire game will be horrible without logistics, which is like 100% true. It's pretty self-explanatory. Like logistics is just absolutely bonkers. At the same time, I can see being able to win without them. It's kind of tough, so I can see you know going it both ways. And again, logistics, I imagine like it's pretty self-explanatory. I shouldn't really. Um, expand on this too much so we're just gonna do we have a coin anywhere we're just gonna toss a coin i have a, a coin here if we're gonna um you know the number is gonna be you will lose without these skills uh the whatever herb is gonna go into the second category let's check it out it's a number it is it's a really shitty coin yeah, so this goes over here. Logistics. You will straight up lose without this skill. Um, I don't mind. Like, I can see this going either way. Anyway, next up, let's clean clean this list up a bit. We're gonna move intelligence into straight up garbage. It's just garbage. <laughs> like, it just is. I, I guess, like, you could argue for the slippers category. Like, it's kind of nice having it. Um, but no, it's, it's just garbage. It's just so bad. Like, here's the thing, um, oftentimes you stay in the town, like, in, intelligence, first of all, intelligence only comes into play at the very late game stages. That's when you actually, you know, the, the increase in mana becomes significant enough to, like, give you some benefit. But with that said, at late game you already have enough mana, and you want to be staying in towns with your hero anyway, just to gain more movement points, just to be able to defend them. So having the extra mana like doesn't really do anything. In the final battles, usually, usually mana is not the defining factor who wins. Like very infrequently when it is the deciding factor. Um, with that said, in most cases like the battles end before you get to spend something like 200 mana or something. So yeah, just intelligence doesn't really bring much to the table. Uh, next up we have water magic. So this goes straight up into here. A portion of your game will be horrible if you don't have water magic. Very sad stronghold. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, water magic does a few things very well for some, for some, for something like conflux, I suppose. That's the best example. In early game, you want water magic as your first magic, just so you could expert bless everything. If you don't have expert bless at early game as conflux, it will feel really bad. Now, in the late game, it is also super important just for prayer alone. Like, prayer could be the defining factor when deciding who wins the final battle in pretty close cases. So, yeah, it's not like you cannot win the games without water magic. It's never a top priority, but it will feel bad at certain portions of the game if you don't have it. Now, to make sure that the slippers are not that lonely, let's put a skill in this category as well. We have fire magic. So, fire magic... Um, it doesn't feel bad having it. Expert Berserk is a very niche skill, but it can be fucking amazing. It can absolutely just straight up win you games. 
It doesn't happen as frequently as with, you know, something like Diplomacy. Like again, Diplomacy and Expert Berserk both can win you games. But Diplomacy is far more consistent, it's far more reliable. Expert Berserk is kind of like, meh. So, like, you're not sad about the fact that you have fire magic. But you're definitely not, you know, consciously just happy about it. So it has its uses, but it's not that great. Now, speaking of very niche skills, I'm gonna put tactics as well here. So tactics, it's not that bad. It's, you're not, you know, thrilled about having it, but it has, first of all, it has some niche uses. Like, especially when you're relying on a ranged power stack, so namely when you're playing Rampart and you're like tempoing, you probably have like a Grand Elves power stack, and tactics at that point becomes a really valuable skill. Suddenly, like, you don't need armor, suddenly you don't need offense, because again, you're relying on Grand Elves, so archery is all you need, and at that point, um, tactics provide you a lot of, a lot of safety. Now, these niche scenarios aside, Tactics in general allows you to bleed less army. When you're facing something like, you know, you're early in the desert, let's say week free, early in the desert, you're progressing through the desert very slowly, you have very limited amount of uh, army, maybe spell casting, you don't have control yet, you cannot go back and refill your army. You need to preserve whatever army you have. And Tactics is actually excellent at that. You say you encounter like a nasty guard on, on the road, a bunch of like black dragons or a bunch of like titans. With Tactics you can position your monster so that uh, black dragons cannot hit your power stack or that you can reach within a single turn those titans. So it does prevent you from bleeding out the monsters. Um, it has its uses, but overall, you know, nobody is happy about picking up tactics. That's how it is. Um, interference. Garbage. <laughs> I don't know, that, that there's like one hero that starts with interference. And like you would think in the final battle, interference would actually do something. But it is so bad to start with interference. Um, which does absolutely fucking nothing throughout the entire like one two three four weeks of the game Even at week four if you take the final battle your interference will not do that much yet So interference is really a super late game skill and until then it's just a completely dead skill in the super late game you might get some value out of it, but here's the caveat since you've been having a dead skill for this many weeks your opponent is probably ahead enough for, you know, your interference to not matter. And if it does matter, right, if it was a pretty close game, imagine instead of interference having like offense for the first four weeks. Like you would have done so much more and you would be far more ahead of your opponent. So interference is just um, straight up kind of garbage in Jeebus Outcast, like just based on how uh, the template plays out. Now, speaking of other garbage, we have ballistics. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's garbage. Anyway, <laughs> sorcery. Let's put that here as well. This is... Man, it, it's just not good. <laughs> it, it, it's just not good. It's like, no. It's, it's a dead skill throughout all of the... Um, like, it's a dead skill all the way to the final battle, and at the final battle, um, unless it's a very close game, and even then, like, so many of the other skills would have done so much more, it's just, it's just fucking garbage, like, you don't want it. So next up, let's do leadership, maybe. A leadership is kind of wonky, like, I think it's like in the slippers category. I think it's kind of nice having leadership. It has its uses, you know, it's it's somewhat consistent, like it allows you to take a bit tougher fights, I suppose, like versus AI, you know, versus guards and shit. It preserves some army, but like, again, like, you don't really think about it, you're not really thrilled about it, you don't prioritize it, um, so yeah, it's just kind of nice to have. Luck is kind of similar, but garbage. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just garbage. <laughs> I'd much rather have two turns. I'd, ra I'd much rather hit twice than I would hit for double damage. So, yeah, you just, you just never pick luck. It's just, it's just straight up garbage. No, <laughs> it's just garbage. 
So next up, next up pathfinding and I don't really think it's good at all. As far as I'm aware, and do correct me if I'm wrong, but just because, you know, my kind of lack of experience in Heroes 3, like uh, comprehensive experience in Heroes 3, I think the only time this comes into play realistically is when you're in the desert. So it does have a use at specifically like week 3, week 4 before you pick up control, after you have broken and before you pick up control. But having a skill this dead throughout the game, like it's dead at the start and it's dead in the late game, I don't think it warrants anything. The only other use case I can come up with is like playing tower where you go for ivory towers, you pick up some enchanters and you have pathfinding, neutralizing your penalty. So then it's kind of nice, but then again, tower doesn't even have heroes with pathfinding. So it's, you know, what if kind of situation? What if pathfinding was introduced back? So I'm gonna rate it as garbage and like it just, no, it just doesn't do anything. Unless I am mistaken about the mechanics. So feel free to correct me in the comment section. Now we have three skills left, we have Wisdom, Mysticism and Archery. Uh, wisdom is a super tough one because it is sort of in a sense mandatory if you decide to go for the bunker, but then again like it's not the Wisdom that wins you the games. So like it doesn't, like these categories do not do justice to the Wisdom, so I'm not sure if even it makes sense to rank it anywhere. Wisdom serves one purpose and one purpose only. Do you want to go to the bunker? If yes, wisdom is mandatory. Like you cannot do it otherwise. If the answer is no, you just don't like wisdom, like no. So I don't think it belongs in any of these categories. It doesn't function like fundamentally the same way as all the other secondary skills. It doesn't allow you to do anything like extra. Like nobody is building, you know, mage guilds or farming like pyramids in the desert. Like if you have wisdom, you go bunker. If you don't have wisdom, you don't go bunker. So uh, we're just gonna delete this skill and like it doesn't belong anywhere. Now next up we have mysticism and mysticism. I would actually place it in the slippers category. I only know one hero that starts with mysticism. Maybe there's more from tower, but like nobody plays them probably. Uh, there's Risa that plays with mysticism, uh, starts with it. And I've been spamming a lot of tower and I still think, <laughs> and like, I'll prove it one day to the entire fucking world, that tower is actually pretty good tempo. So tower is actually pretty good tempo. And one of the things that really helps that tempo is actually mysticism. Just being able to spam those magic arrows at early levels lets you take you know tougher fights i'm um, having it in the mid game is 15 mana per turn recovery so when you're progressing through the desert it comes into play again even at late game i can see you know that 15 mana being kind of nice not great kind of nice but then again like we're talking about weeks one to four you get some value out of it so again, it is like you're not thrilled about mysticism, like don't get me wrong, you're not happy about it, but you know, it does a thing or two, it's kind of nice. And lastly, we have archery. So archery is kind of garbage. <laughs> like, it kind of is garbage. Like I, I would want to put it in the slippers category, just because, you know, it synergizes so well with like uh, ramparts. Sometimes you do end up with power stacks of ranged creatures, but it happens so infrequently. And if your power stack is ranged creature, then you need a lot of support for it. So maybe you would rather still have something else like, uh, you know, focus on the bow of sharpshooter and have something like armor instead of archery. Um, if you have a strong enough power stack of ranged creatures, then probably you're gonna win without archery anyway. It's not like it's not like a win condition or anything. At the same time, something like Genova for Rampart, the only reason why it's so good is because you go for Grand Elves and you have archery as your starting skills. Well, then again, like if some other heroes were available for Rampart that would start with, let's say, only armor or offense, then probably people would pick that over Genova. So, like, archery probably just goes straight up into the garbage. 
Again, I just don't really see it being much. Um, you're kind of sad rather than okay uh, picking it at any point in the game. You know, when you pick like leadership, like eh, at least I'll be able to morale a bit, at least I'll be able to fit in um, creatures from different factions, I won't get the uh, morale penalty, like maybe this will actually win me the game or something. With mysticism, you're kind of happy recovering mana each turn, you can spam more skills. But with archery, it's like, it's <sighs> just sad, it's uh, just sad. So yeah, um, I think this would be the final tier list categorization, name it however you want, for the secondary skills in uh, Jeebus Outcast. There would be some disagreements, I can, I can see them. If I was to use a different rating system, like 1 to 10 scale, I can see like, you know, Offense and armor being higher than scouting, I suppose. But for this category, this is how I think. This is how I think when you know I'm playing any game and when I'm selecting which skills I want to go for. This is how I think about it, and this is how I choose the skills. And I think it does more justice to the secondary skills rather than a simple one to ten scale. So yeah, that is at the end of the day my opinion, feel free to disagree, I'll be happy to chat with you in the comment section, and yeah, that's how I'm gonna wrap up this video, so thank you folks for watching, uh, see you guys in my streams I suppose, so yeah, cheers.